ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار My brothers, sisters in Islam, respected shiuch, elders, seniors, community members I begin with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of Salam May the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah be with you and upon you and with your loved ones and family members Ya Rabb Ameen I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Reminding myself and you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that truly guides and whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions and sinful desires and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remind myself and you that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger the final prophet and the slave and the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, when we look at what's happening today in Palestine, it brings tears to the eyes. It reminds me of when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was burying his child. He says, إِنَّ الْعَيْنَ تَدْمَعْ وَإِنَّ الْقَلْبَ يَحْزَنْ Indeed, the eyes shed tears. And the heart feels sorrow. And we're saddened deeply by your departure, my son, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wala naqul illa ma yurdillah. But we will only say that which pleases Allah. Qaddar Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al. Lillahi ma akhada wa lahu ma a'ata. Wa kulla shay'in indahu li ajalin musamma. Fal nasbir wal nahtasib. Allahumma jirna fi musibatina. Wa akhlufna khayran minha. He said, the eyes shed tear, the hearts feel sorrow. My heart feels sorrow. And we're deeply saddened by your departure, O Ibrahim. But we will only say that which pleases you, our Lord. Whatever you've decreed has come to be. And whatever your will has been manifested. And to Allah, we all belong. And to Allah, we're in a state of perpetual return. Oh Allah, grant us patience to be able to process what's happening and allow us to observe and to witness better times. That's what the Prophet ﷺ did and said. And when the companions saw him in that moment, they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, even you feel sadness? Even you feel that sense of grief? He said, indeed, it is mercy that Allah places in the heart of the believer. And when he وسلم, spoke to the companions, he said, the one who does not feel for her fellow, for his fellow brother and sister, the one who does not experience the pain for his fellow brother and sister should question his or her iman. Meaning, if you're able to tune this off completely, I'm not saying you take some time to recollect yourself, but completely and say, it's not my problem. It's not my issue. It's their issue, has nothing to do with me. That statement, that position, that stance should get you to question your iman, your faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the genocide that is happening now in Gaza reminds us what happened to the believers in Medina. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بِتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا وَإِذْ قَالَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْهُمْ يَا أَهْلَ يَثْرِبَ لَا مُقَامَ لَكُمْ فَارْجِعُوا وَيَسْتَأْذِنُ فَرِيقٌ مِنْهُمُ النَّبِيُّ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّ بُيُوتَنَا عَوْرَةٌ وَمَا هِيَ بِعَوْرَةٍ إِنْ يُرِيدُونَ إِلَّا فِرَارًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember, O believers, when you were few and Medina was besieged and they came from above you and from behind you, from your west, from your east, and you were overwhelmed. Zaghatil Absar, you didn't know where to look. Everywhere you look, you would be overwhelmed by the what the sight could see, what the eyes could see. And your hearts almost jumped out of your chest from the worry, from the anxiety. And in that moment, in that test, in the overwhelming feeling, you had categories of people begin to appear. You had a group that said, Ya Ahla Yathriba, O people of Yathrib, they're not calling it Medina anymore. What are they saying? Ya Ahla Yathrib. O oh, people of Yathrib, la muqama lakum, we're doomed. This is the end. Farji'u, retreat, retreat. And some of them come to the Prophet and they say, Excuse me, inna buyutana awra. I'm asking for your permission. My home is insecure. My family needs me. My child needs me. My this, my that. So they made excuses to retreat, to take care of their own positions to take care of their own security and not worry about the security of the community. They put their own well-being ahead of the well-being of the ummah. And they made excuses to say to the Prophet ﷺ things that they didn't actually mean, things that were not on the ground. A stance of hypocrisy to retreat and to protect their self-interests. And others, they weren't hypocritical. They were explicit in their explicit in their response. They said, no, this is doom and gloom. We need to sign treaties with the others so that when Medina is taken over, when Yathrib is taken over, we're not going to get the short end of the stick. And they betrayed the covenants with the Prophet ﷺ. Even though they promised that they would defend their city, they would defend Medina, they retreated. And others... Al-Mu'minuna, when they saw this, they said, what Allah has promised us is the absolute truth. And what Allah has stated in the Quran is the absolute truth. So imagine the hypocrites are saying, Ma Allah wa illa what the Prophet and the Messenger and Allah have promised us, it's all lies. Their Iman began to shake, they began to lose their footing. The people of Iman, when they saw this, they're like, this is exactly what Allah said would happen. And this is exactly what the messenger said would happen. And what did they mean by that? This is exactly what Allah said would happen and what the messenger would predict. This is what he predicted. Because Allah told us in the Quran, you will be tested. Allah told us in the Quran, the most beloved amongst you are going to be the most tested. The higher your iman, the greater the test. Allah tested Ibrahim. Allah tested Yusuf. Yusuf. Allah tested Yaqub. Allah tested Ayyub. Allah tested the ones that he loves the most. And he told us as believers, do you think you're going to be allowed to enter Jannah? Eternity of bliss easily like that? Without being tested? Without being trialed? You will be tested with loss of wealth. You will be tested with fear and poverty and loss of life. All kinds of tests. To a point, to a point where you begin to shake. And the people of Iman will begin to say, Mata Nasrullah. When is the victory coming? So Allah told us in the Quran, there will be moments in the history of your ummah where you will be given such tests. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْيُمَحِّصَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلْيُمَحِّصَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah will allow in those moments the people of Iman for their faith to shine. And we see that. We see the people of Gaza as they bury their children, as they're tearing, as their rolls or tears are rolling down their eyes, they're saying, Ya Allah, I've lost trust in humanity. I've lost trust in everybody. I've lost trust in the people that call me their brother and sister, but I will never lose trust in you. 
Ya Allah, you're the only one that I truly believe in. We have people that pass out in their comas. What are they saying? They're saying, La ilaha illallah. They're saying, Alhamdulillah. Their subconscious is manifest as they're in these positions of absolute vulnerability. And Allah is showing you, despite going through that level of test, their iman remains consistent and persistent. What is your excuse? The smallest thing shakes us up. The smallest discomfort, the smallest thing that doesn't go our way, makes us lose our footing, lose our clarity, lose our grounding. So they become a testament. When Allah says, وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاءَ Allah will take amongst you martyrs. The same word, martyr, also is the word witness. Someone who saw and someone who testifies. Because they saw and they see what we don't see. They see the bliss and the blessings of Allah that we cannot see. And they become a testament for us who persist, persisted and resisted. And they become a testament against us, amongst us, those who became complacent, complicit, and became accomplices and became from those who clapped and danced and enjoyed and let the fuel of war continue and the fuel of genocide continue to burn loud and strong. And that's what tests do. Tests show where everybody stands. Tests show everybody's position. So you're able to look around you and see and know the people of true Iman from the people who are shaky, from the people who manifest Iman externally but hide deep ha hatred, deep hatred for the people of Iman internally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be on the right side of history by speaking out against genocide. May Allah allow us to be from those like the people of Medina when they saw all of this, they did not give up. They persisted. They said, this is what Allah has promised. This is what the messenger of Allah told us would happen. And this was an opportunity for them to shine, to step up, to not lose iman, to not lose faith, but an opportunity for them to showcase tenacity and resilience. And on an optimistic note, my brothers and my sisters, Remember that it's in the most intense moments of pain, in the most intense moments of pain, that beautiful things are created. Pain can be constructive, mourning can be productive, as long as we're able to channel that pain and sadness and sorrow to stay together, to unite, and to fill the gaps that we have accumulated in the last couple of decades, in the last century, as an ummah. Think about Maryam. When she was in that moment of pain, giving birth to a miracle. She's giving birth to Kalimatullah. She's giving birth to Isa ibn Maryam. The pain was so intense that she said, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyam mansiya. I wish I had died before this moment and I wish I never existed. I wish my name did not enter this record of history. But after that, when she looked at what Allah has allowed her to give birth to, what a miracle that was Isa ibn Maryam. Imagine Hajar when she was left alone in the middle of the desert by herself. <coughs> and she ran from Safa and Marwa back and forth until she was exhausted. She had nothing left to give. Nothing left to produce. She put her son, her baby on the ground. He scratches the ground and Zamzam is born. A source of life is born. That doesn't just quench the thirst of her son and her. But becomes the reason that an entire population, an entire society is born. And that's why she's coined by some as the mother of the Arabs. 
So in the moments of intense pain, that some of the most beautiful miracles happen. And think about Medina. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the people of Medina? Allah sent wind. And that interrupted everything. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon Ashab al fil the people of the elephants, Tayran Ababil, that interrupted and disrupted their plan, foiled their plan in their faces. Allah can use wind, Allah can use earth, Allah can use water, Allah can use fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the earth that Qarun stood on top of and said, this is my kingdom. The earth swallowed him. Fir'aun that stood on the water with his palace that had see-through glass, he could see the water underneath him. And he said, أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرَ وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي Do you not see that I own this land of Egypt, it's mine, and the rivers flow from underneath me. How did Allah bring him to account? Allah allowed that water to swallow him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a command upon this ummah to be an agent of justice. Like he commands the wind and the earth and the water to hold and to bring to account injustice, he's commanded this ummah to be an instrument of justice. وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Let there be amongst this ummah people who will stand up for justice and who will encourage and call towards good and justice and who will deter and prevent people and hold people accountable when it comes to injustice. And what is interesting, my brothers and sisters, if you look on the positives, there's a lot of negatives, a lot of reasons to be sad. But if you focus on the positives that this moment in history has brought out, the amount of people that are emailing us asking, I want to study Islam, I need a copy of the Quran, I see the faith of the people of Palestine and it invokes something in me. I see the patience of this mother, the tears that are rolling down her eyes, the blood on her hands of her baby. Yet her faith is unshaking, unwavering. I need to understand that better. I need to read the Quran. The amount of people that have created reading clubs where they're reading the Quran, people that are not Muslim, learning, studying, coming to the masjid, learning, asking questions. And they become louder supporters of the people of Palestine than some of our own Muslim brothers and sisters. And it reminds me of the ayah, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ if you turn away from what Allah has asked of you, Allah will replace you with people who are not like you. And they will not make the same mistakes that you have done. They will not take the deen for granted. They will not take this religion, this covenant with Allah for granted. They will not take it as something that is light. They will wear it, the badge of honor. The, the garment of iman is something that they take dignity and honor. You don't wear it part-time and take it off. They wear it full-time in honor. That's what the Prophet ﷺ told us in interpreting the ayah in the Qur'an. The amount of unity that has come out of this, my brothers and my sisters. Leaders that did not speak to each other for years are saying, let's put our differences aside. Let's put, put our aqidah differences, our madhab differences aside. And focus on the needs of the ummah. Families coming together. Youth becoming more focused, oriented. Give up addictions, give up desires, giving up harm relationships. Because they say, I want to do whatever I can to be on the right side of history. I want my dua to be accepted for the people of Palestine. So I'm going to get rid of all the excess in my life. Things that I don't need. 
things that have been keeping me boggled, things that have prevented me from having a genuine relationship with Allah, this is my wake-up call. I don't need it. And it's in these subhanAllah times that you have think tanks coming together, communities coming together, unification taking place in the ummah that insha'Allah will sow the seeds for better days tomorrow. That's long term. And short term, the advocacy and the protests and the calling to account and the messages and the letters and the emails that we continue to send to the politicians, that will not stop. But it's in moments like this that we have to take a step back and appreciate the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wisdom of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows certain things to manifest. Imagine when the Muslims were in Medina or the Muslims were even earlier in Dar al-Arqam and there were just a few of them studying the Quran. They could not publicly say the Shahada. They could not publicly read Quran too loud because they would be persecuted and they would be beat. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes that group and allows them subhanallah to share the message of Islam beyond their borders to places that they would have never imagined they would be able to travel to and say la ilaha illallah. My brothers and my sisters, do not lose hope. Do not lose faith. Do not lose optimism. Because that's what Allah reminds us. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَمَا ضَعِفُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا They did not weaken. They did not become disabled. They did not lose faith. They did not stop working despite what they faced in the path of Allah. Because they knew that even if they failed, their effort with Allah is rewarded. Even if, did, if nothing comes to fruition, their effort with Allah is rewarded in ways that no human being can reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to stand firmly and justly and truly and constructively for the people of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be united and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us not to take their pain, their emotions, their giving, their investments and their sacrifices for granted. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفرونا والغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من اصطفى اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في ما أعطيت فقنا وصرف عنا برحمتك الشر ما قضيت اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا مهتدين اللهم بارك لنا وفينا وعلينا واجعلنا مباركين اللهم اهد شبابنا ونساءنا ورجالنا واغفر لوالدينا وارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم انصر المصدعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصر المصدعفين في غزة يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين وللمسلمات وارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم انصرهم على عدوهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ثبتهم يا رب العالمين ووحد صفوفهم واشرح لهم صدورهم يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على من عاداهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم وداوي جرحاهم وتقبل شهداءهم اللهم اغفر لموتاهم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وعافي معاف عنهم ووسع مدخلهم ونقهم من الذنوب والخطايا يا رب العالمين يا الله we ask you to keep the people of Palestine يا رب in your safety in your care يا رب آمين we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to accept those who passed on يا رب as people who occupy the highest level of Firdaus, Ya Rabbi Ameen. We ask Allah to allow them to enter Jannah without any prior punishment or account, Ya Rabbi Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower your mercy upon the children, the innocent men and the innocent women of Palestine, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Ya Allah, allow us to stand firmly and truthfully, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Allow us to remain committed to justice, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Allow us to bring an end to this genocide, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And allow us to be from those who advocate for truth, Ya Rab, regardless of what it means and what losses we have to take place in the meantime. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect all of us here, Ya Rab, at home. We ask you to keep us united and firm and justly upon truth, Ya Rab, Ameen. Ya Allah, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barika ala nabina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.
عباد الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي الله سبحانه وتعالى says إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوتا الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله So there will be qunut in the second rak'ah, qunut, dua for the people of Palestine in the second rak'ah. Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm Al-Din, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Al-Siraq Al-Mustaqim, صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمله الحمد لله والشكر لله ولا إله إلا الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون فصبر جميل والله المستعان على ما تصفون حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل حسبنا المولى ونعم النصير حسبنا الله الذي هو حسبنا حسبنا الله العلي الكبير اللهم انصر المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم نصرا عاجلا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على عدوهم وثبتهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لموتاهم وتاوي جرحاهم وعاف مبتلاهم يا رب العالمين رحماك رحماك يا رب الناس 
رحماك رحماك يا رب العالمين رحماك بالأطفال الغطع يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين رحماك بالمستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان الذين لا يستطيعون حيلة ولا يبتغون سبيلا رحماك يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم على عدوهم اللهم انصرهم نصرا عاجلا يا كريم اللهم رد إلينا المسجد الأقصى ردا جميلا وارزقنا صلاة فيه يا رب العالمين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سبلا لمن اهتدى اللهم بارك لنا وفينا واجعلنا مباركين يا رب العالمين اغفر للمسلمين وارحم المؤمنين ووحد صفوفنا يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين